Hello and happy Sabbath Church family, Pastor Lisa Semino here, and I want to welcome you to our Sabbath worship service. I'm so glad that you decided to worship with your Chandler Community Fellowship family today. So let's open with a word of prayer, shall we? Amen. Will you please bow your heads with me? Lord, we thank you. We thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for bringing us together again to worship you on your holy Sabbath day. We thank you for your grace, for your mercy. We thank you for your unconditional, never-ending love, a love that overwhelms us because we're so unworthy, yet so grateful. Lord, take control. Take control, Lord. Fill our hearts and our homes with your spirit, Lord. We pray that the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts will be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. 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 And amen. Our scripture is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 34 and verses 1 through 4. Now Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land, Gilead, as far as Dan, and all Naphtali, and the land of Ephraim, Manasseh, and all the land of Judah, as far as the Western Sea, and the Negev, and the plain, and the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zoar. Then the Lord said to him, this is the land I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I've let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not go over there. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. And may it sink deep down into your hearts in the days, months, and years to come. Amen. So, you get assigned to a new project and department. The goals and expectations were laid out clearly. You hemmed and hawed initially, but because you didn't really feel like it was the best fit. But eventually, you got into it. Your, your best friend, you know, your brother is hired to come and work with you. You put your heart and your soul into it. You, you had some major personnel issues and morale was bad, but you were still invested. You risk and neglect some of the most important relationships of your life for it. Your immediate family suffers most. Along the way, you acquire a young, sharp management training. You and your brother both make some major mistakes, but you keep on pressing on. You know, you're committed. And now, you're almost at the finish line. Almost there. Your brother is scheduled for a meeting with the boss. Rumor has it, it's not going to end well. And unfortunately, it doesn't. Then, you get a message that the boss wants to meet with you. You meet with the boss and initially, sounds like an update meeting. He takes you on a tour and talks about the history of and gives you a panoramic view of the new territory. It seems like all your hard work is about to pay off. But then, meeting takes a hard left and it all goes south from there. Bottom line, you're out. Your department has been reassigned to the person you've been training who will now lead them in the transition to the new location. But you are so close. You stand in the distant view of an unobtainable object. Mm. Today, I want to preach on the subject, Pisgah View. Professor George Ladau of Brown University describes it as a coming together, a confrontation of 
human and divine, temporal and eternal, immediately before the death of a prophet who had given his life to serving God and his chosen, and his chosen people. And it therefore stands simultaneously as the culmination, the reward, and the punishment for the acts of that life. Our dear brother Moses, who under the auspices of the Holy Spirit, authored the first five books of the Bible. Moses, God's prophet and friend, knows firsthand about the Pisgah view. Deuteronomy, the fifth and final book of Moses, which means second law, or more appropriately, the second giving of the law. Moses gave a history lesson as he revisited the teachings and the events of Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. He also talks more in depth about the Ten Commandments and begins what is identified as his farewell address. And this address is to a new generation of Israelites. Moses spoke of God's faithfulness as the survivors of the great Exodus prepared to take possession of the promised land. He also warned them as he spoke of God's wrath on the previous generation of Israelites because of their disobedience and rebellion. In the events, in the chapters of Deuteronomy 31 through 33, leading up to the scripture in Deuteronomy 34, Deuteronomy chapter 31, you know, uh, talks of Moses' death, how it was foretold and time was drawing near. And it, as it goes on in those in those aforementioned chapters, Joshua was commissioned as Moses' successor. Moses prophesied of Israel's backsliding. And as if that weren't enough, he basically told them, I wrote a song about your backsliding in Deuteronomy 32. Want to hear? Well, here it go. Moses penned the prophecy as a song. A song to serve as a reminder, not if, but when it came to pass. Moses gave his final blessing in Deuteronomy chapter 33. You know, the first time God spoke to Moses, he spoke through a burning bush on a mountain and gave Moses his marching orders. The last time God spoke to Moses, he spoke to him on a mountain. And during his final briefing before his death, can you imagine seeing a panoramic view of the promised land? in the presence of God, the very land that God promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now family, I don't know about you, but I would have been in tears. Though death was imminent, it would have been hard for me not to worship God right then and right there on that mountain one last time. Deuteronomy 34 uh, verses 5 through 7 in the New Living Translation tells us, so Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, just as the Lord said. The Lord buried him in a valley near Beth Peor in Moab. But to this day, to this day, family, no one knows the exact location. Moses was 120 years old when he died. Yet his eyesight was clear and he was as strong as ever. While preparing for this message, I never really got the feeling that Moses was sad about death. He got to see how his story ends, you know? And it ended seeing the plan, the process, and the promise of God all come to pass. Now don't forget, Moses already knew what the new generation was going to do. Remember the song in Deuteronomy 32? 
I encourage you to read that when you get an opportunity. Family, he had already experienced that with the previous generations. But Joshua, Joshua, his successor, was part of the new generation of Israelites. He had seen what they had seen. He had perspective of the promise and the present in his own eyes. He also had the history of the journey to the promise from the past through Moses' eyes and words. According to Deuteronomy 34 and 8, when Moses died, there was no fanfare, no monuments, just a 30-day customary mourning period. Why? Well, there was still work to do. A family, no matter who dies? Yes, we hurt. Yes, we grieve. Yes, we mourn. And for me, that hits different now. But there is still work to do. When I first started working on this sermon and the Lord gave me the scripture, I immediately thought about Dr. Martin Luther King. I recently started reading his book, Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos or Community. The first photo in the book was taken before he spoke to the striking Memphis sanitation workers. This was Dr. King's final speech and there was no doubt in my mind that he was preaching from his own Pisgah view. Dr. King spoke of the looming threats on his life circulating in Memphis. He didn't know what was going to happen, but he knew that there were difficult days ahead as he mentioned in his speech. But it didn't matter because Dr. King said he feared no man. Mercy. And this is my, my favorite part right here. Dr. King said, because I've been to the mountaintop, and I've seen the promised land. Family, one day you and I will have our own Pisgah view. When God gave me this assignment and led me to plant this church, I knew that the plan, the process, and the promise would not end with me. But what I do know is this, God chose me. He chose me to do a mighty work, a work that will help to lead some to Christ for the first time and help others to return to him. A work to encourage and to uplift his children, a, a work that will teach me so that I can teach others work that will grant me an opportunity for growth so that I can do the same for others, a work that will stretch, challenge, change, and ultimately prepare me, prepare my family, my friends, and all those who accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior for his soon coming and the promise of the ultimate promised land a place where Revelation 21 and 4 tells us he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away. Don't you want to be there? Don't you want to be there, family? I know that I do. I really, really do. I pray that you were blessed by today's message. And family, if you've not already done so, if you've not already accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, or even if you want to rededicate yourself to him, Please make Jesus your choice today. 
time is short shorter than you think Jesus he is the way the truth and the life he is the only way to the Father I promise you if you make him Lord and Savior of your life it will absolutely be the best decision you will ever make so please if that is your desire I encourage you to tell him tell him you want to come home tell him you want to spend the ceaseless ages of eternity with him tell him you want to be him to be the Lord and Savior of your life Tell him you want your steps to be ordered by his word because the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So I invite you, please, if that's your desire, please connect with us. Leave a message in the comment section. Or connect with us, with us on any of our social media platforms. We look forward to being your family. We look forward to you being a part of this family. Let us close with prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you for all the wonderful things that you've done here today. Thank you for your love that you've shown us and that we've been able to share together. We pray that we will continue to learn and to understand the words that you've sown within our hearts today. Care for these words, protect them and help them to take root in time. Help your words to grow and blossom within us. As we prepare to close this service, Lord, we thank you for always walking with us. Thank you. When the, may we always hear your word and strive to live within your love for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory now and forever amen let us say our benediction together the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen.